Um, the thing I wanted to talk about on chapter E1 is um, Coulomb's law. Um, students sometimes find um, calculating the force and uh, the magnitude and the direction, they sometimes find that difficult. And there's also some notation in this um, book that sometimes students find confusing. So uh, I want to show you the formula for Coulomb's law is um, the force, say, on an electron um, is equal to K Q1 Q2 over R squared. Now um, K is called the um, Coulomb's constant and it's used in the book, um, K is used in the book to calculate problems, but we also have another um, expression used for K. So you'll see right here, 1 over 4 pi epsilon naught, this is also equal to K. And the reason that, um, that they use that, um, both of them in the book, and students find that confusing, the, the reason that they do that is because later on in following chapters, um, we'll find that 1 over 4 pi epsilon naught is very useful for the notation that we're using. So, um, so later on it's, it's useful, and so they're trying to get you used to it now. So anytime you see 1 over 4 pi epsilon naught in your head, think, well, that's equal to k. And k in these equations are, is a lot easier to use because I can just, k is equal to 9, Right here, k is equal to 9 times 10 to the 9th newtons meter squared per coulomb squared. And so I can plug in 9 times 10 to the 9th here, whereas if I look at um, 1 over 4 pi epsilon naught, it's a little tougher to calculate because I have to multiply 4 times pi times epsilon naught here. So, um, so just notice that in the book, that um, don't be confused if they're using them interchangeably. It's just to get you used to seeing them both. Um, Okay, the other thing is, notice that um, we have these two bars around Q1 and Q2. And what that means is, that means don't worry about the, the sign. So we're only calculating the value of multiplying these two numbers together. We don't care what the sign is. And that's because we're, we're calculating only the magnitude. And, and what does that mean? And, and that just means if I have a vector, say that looks like this, and we'll call this my vector Fe, well, the magnitude the calculating this number and, ha and a positive, this will be a positive number, it just tells me the length of this vector. It doesn't tell me anything about the direction. The calculating this number just tells me about the length. And so I, want, I just want a positive number. I don't want to have a negative number in here. So when I calculate the magnitude of the force, that's what I'm doing. I'm calculating the length of this vector. It can be this way, it can be this way. I just want to know the length. Um, but so now, force is a vector, though. So let's say I calculate that length, but I also need to know the direction that that vector is pointing. All right, so let's figure that out. If I want to figure out what the direction is, let's say I have um, a force. Let's say if I draw a force here, we'll call this a, um, a negative charge, or I have a charge, and I have a charge down here and we'll have this be a positive charge. And I want to know what is the force, what is the direction of the force on this negative charge by this positive charge. So what's this positive charge doing to this negative charge? Well, I know since these charges are opposite, I know that this charge is going to be attracted to the positive. So what that means is there's a force exerted on the negative and it's going to pull it down. So that would be my, the, the direction of my force. Well, how do I figure out what direction that is? Um, let's draw our coordinate system, and we always know that to the right is a positive x, and up the page is a positive y. So if I think about this force, right, I'm going and I break, let's break this force up into components, right? So this is going to be my x component, right? It's in the x direction, and this is going to be my, oops, not very straight. This is going to be my y component of the force. And if I think about these components, my x component of the force is going to the left. And that's opposite my positive x direction. So that means that this is going to be negative. Um, if I look at y, right, that's opposite the positive y direction, so that's going to be negative. So the way we figure out the direction is we can write, because um, force is a vector, we can write it as a, um, write it as a column vector. So we're going to say the, our force is equal to, we'll write the x component of the column vector here. So this is f sub x. This is f sub y. And because we're only working in this plane of the page, we don't have a z, right? z would be in and out of the page. But our, we're not, we've defined our charges to be right on this page. So our z direction is going to be 0. Our z force is going to be 0.
Okay, so now if I want to figure out what this f sub x is, right, I can use trigonometry. So um, this, let's say this is my angle theta. And so if that's my angle theta and I'm looking at fx, fx is adjacent to theta. So cosine of theta is equal to adjacent over hypotenuse. And that's equal to f sub x over f, my this force. So f sub x over f. And now I want to get f, x, f sub x alone. So I multiply. The way I do that is I multiply both sides by f. I can cross that out and I get f sub x is equal to f cosine theta. Okay, so that tells me what my f component is. But what about now my y? y is opposite the angle, so that means I need sine. So I have sine of theta is equal to opposite over hypotenuse, which is equal to opposite is f sub y, and my hypotenuse is f. So now to get f y alone, I multiply both sides by, I'm sorry, f, that's just f, and I can cross my f's out, and I get f sub y is equal to f sine of theta. Okay, so now I can plug these, so I now I have my f sub x and my f sub y, oops, and I can plug them in up here. So now my f sub x is f cosine theta, my f sub y is f sine theta, and again zero, or f sub z is zero, and now what about my sines, right? We talked about them being negative. So f cosine theta, this, is negative because it's in the negative, it's, it's opposite. This direction is opposite the positive x direction, and so is my y component. So that's how I would um, write my vector here, my, or my um, force, as a vector. And I can also write it like this. I can pull out the f. So this f would be the magnitude, the number that I calculated, right, if I wanted to find f, f is equal to k q1 q2 over r squared, the distance between the charges, and that's just a, no, a positive number, and then I would have a negative cosine theta, a negative sine theta, and zero. And so for whatever case I have, I have to determine whether or not these, um, these values here are positive or negative.